Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about testosterone and its roles in healthy skin aging. Little attention is given to the roles of testosterone in skin health and skin aging. The truth is that testosterone is not a gender specific hormone, but a hormone that is necessary for the health of both females and male bodies. And in aging, stress and disease, the production of hormones like testosterone are known to decline. And at the skin level, it has also been well documented that decreased or declining testosterone levels correspond with declining skin health, a decrease in skin integrity, elasticity, and density. So in the same way that testosterone plays essential roles in general health and well-being and adaptation to stress, testosterone is also very important for healthy skin aging. So what I'd like to do with you in this video is talk more in detail about the roles of testosterone in skin health and skin aging, and then provide some tips for optimizing testosterone levels as an anti-aging strategy. Now in mainstream skincare, you won't see testosterone mentioned much other than being a call or cause for the development of things like acne. Now, it is partly true that testosterone may be a contributing factor to the development of acne in the sense that androgen hormones like testosterone and DHT can stimulate the oil glands or sebum glands in the skin, causing them to overproduce oil, which would lead to an accumulation of bacterial growth, which could lead to inflammation and therefore acne. However, this is only half of the truth. You see, testosterone is one of the hormones that tends to decrease under the influence of chronic stress and aging, not rise. So to assume that testosterone is the cause for some sort of health imbalance or a symptom of the disease state is completely inaccurate because this is just not the nature of testosterone. You see, there is an untalked about reason for testosterone and other androgen hormones to rise in the face of acute stress. Specifically speaking in regards to acne and a lot of the conditions actually that are blamed on androgens. So things like hirsutism, polycystic ovarian syndrome, male pattern baldness, prostate issues, and even acne is actually caused by chronically elevated levels of stress hormones like estrogen and prolactin, which can cause the body to produce an excess amount of adrenal steroids like DHEA or even androgens like testosterone and DHT in an attempt to buffer the stressful effects of these hormones. So the fact of the matter is, it's not necessarily testosterone and androgens that cause even things like acne. It is the underlying stress hormones that are placing the stress on the body to the point where androgens will try to increase to again buffer or mitigate the effects of that stress hormone. Which is why you see that all of the various stress hormones, estrogen, cortisol, prolactin, adrenaline, and all the ephedrines tend to rise under the influence of chronic stress and aging in that in aging, you'll see the androgen hormones and the protective hormones declining or deficient. So although in the short term, androgen hormones might rise in a healthy person to buffer the effects of stress, over the long term, chronic stress can cause a deficiency by inducing a rebound effect where the elevation of testosterone in the face of stress ultimately leads to the testosterone levels plummeting below their normal ranges after that stress. And I'm bringing this up and clarifying it just because of the fact that testosterone and androgens are, if anything, often blamed for skin problems and are not looked at as the true beneficial and protective hormones that they are, especially in regards to skin aging. So getting more into the roles of testosterone and the aging processes of the skin, this hormonal imbalance of estrogen to testosterone is governed by enzymatic imbalances in the body. There's two primary enzymes that are responsible for the regulation of estrogen and testosterone. In regards to estrogen, there is an enzyme known as the aromatase enzyme. And aromatase is responsible for converting any free testosterone in the body into estradiol or estrogen. And not only does estrogen tend to just rise with stress and aging, but the aromatase enzyme is also stimulated by the stress hormones cortisol and estrogen. So under stress, not only is estrogen rising, but the activity of this aromatase enzyme is increasing, which again converts the testosterone in the body into estrogen. And as estrogen accumulates, estrogen stimulates the adrenal glands to make cortisol, leading to a very vicious cycle of high estrogen, high cortisol, high aromatase activity, and then lower testosterone. And if that weren't enough, estrogen is known to stimulate the production of sex hormone binding globulin, which is a hormone that binds to free testosterone 
testosterone up to 40% of the free testosterone in the body, rendering it useless more or less. So in a variety of different ways, estrogen can greatly oppose the production and activity of testosterone, leading to a deficiency of testosterone. And this is very problematic for the skin because as we'll get into in a moment, you'll see that a wide variety of events that occur in skin aging are associated with declining levels of testosterone. And as you'll see, higher levels of testosterone are associated with more resilient, youthful skin. But elevated levels of estrogen can directly lead to skin aging and skin problems. So for example, one of the major things that estrogen does in the body in regards to inducing a stress is it steals oxygen from the cell. So estrogen actually interferes with the consumption of oxygen to the cell and tissue. So in regards to skin health, it's going to deprive the skin tissue of oxygen. And this can lead to a couple of different issues. In terms of aesthetic or physical appearance, you're gonna see that people with very, very high estrogen levels and their skin isn't getting enough oxygen are gonna have very pale and pasty complexions, almost vampire-like skin skin complexion. So this is something you'll see too in a lot of people that become ill or if they have autoimmune conditions in particularly, which are driven by estrogen, is that their skin is very pale and very pasty. They don't get much blood flow to the skin. And some people might maybe prefer this look or this aesthetic. However, keep in mind that there's more than just an aesthetic thing going on here. But if your skin tissue is not receiving enough oxygen, it's also not gonna be receiving enough blood. And this could lead to skin aging by increasing the production of free radicals or reactive oxygen species, which could lead to oxidative stress and cellular skin aging. And that's one of the major things that estrogen can induce like other stress hormones is oxidative stress. And oxidative the stress next to inflammation is at the root of skin aging. And that leads me to another major negative effect that estrogen can have in the body, which is it can induce inflammation. And its primary mechanism of inducing inflammation is by causing oxidative stress. So most inflammation is preceded by oxidative stress and estrogen's ability to suffocate the cell and increase the production of reactive oxygen species or free radicals is one way that it can induce oxidative stress and therefore inflammation. In addition to that, estrogen is also going to decrease the elasticity of the skin by increasing the degradation of hyaluronic acid. So high estrogen can actually stimulate the production of an enzyme that breaks down hyaluronic acid, which would lead to less elastic skin and skin that is more likely to become very soft and wrinkle. Where testosterone has the opposite effect and is known to increase skin thickness and the integrity of the skin. Which brings our focus to testosterone and some of its specific anti-aging effects on the skin. So we know that as of now, testosterone is a hormone that tends to regulate or oppose estrogen. So if estrogen is dominating testosterone, this in of itself is gonna set the groundwork for accelerated skin aging. As you just learned, estrogen creates a lot of problems to the skin cell, which is gonna cause skin aging and disease. And testosterone being one of the major hormones that can oppose or regulate estrogen, when deficient is obviously going to contribute to the destructive effects of estrogen and stress hormones. So this is why you'll see in the most basic sense that there is a direct correlation between low testosterone levels and decreased skin health or accelerated skin aging. But specifically speaking, looking at a couple of different studies on the roles of testosterone in skin health and aging, it's been found that skin that has a greater accumulation or retention of testosterone regenerates more quickly, heals quicker, and has a higher cellular turnover rate. It's also been found that people with higher testosterone levels, particularly in the skin, it's also been found that people with higher testosterone levels, particularly in the skin, have more moist and hydrated skin. And in addition to that, it's also been seen in various studies that higher levels of testosterone are associated with skin that is less wrinkly and more elastic. So in conclusion, considering the broad range protective effects of testosterone, not just in regards to skin health and skin aging, but health overall, it's gonna be essential that we keep our testosterone levels in an optimal range to ensure healthy skin and a healthy body. So I just wanna share with you now a couple of very quick tips for ensuring optimal levels of testosterone. If you haven't yet already, definitely be sure to watch this video series to get more in-depth tips as to how to increase testosterone levels. Otherwise, some simple things you can start implementing now. The first thing I'm gonna recommend is that considering it's not just low testosterone levels that's associated with skin aging, but the fact that when testosterone levels plummet, this leaves estrogen more unopposed. And it's actually estrogen that drives a lot of the pathological events that causes 
accelerated skin aging. And it's also estrogen that can contribute to a testosterone deficiency by increasing the activity of aromatase enzyme and sex hormone binding globulin. It's gonna be more important that we look at estrogen levels in the body and decreasing those to naturally leave testosterone levels unopposed and capable of having their protective effects. So one of the most important things you're gonna to wanna to do is actively lower these estrogen levels. We have tons of videos here on the YouTube channel that will teach you how to do that. All of our online courses will teach you how to do that. But specifically looking at the effects that estrogen has on the skin and testosterone, one of the most important herbs I think you could take for balancing the estrogen to testosterone ratio in the body is nettle root. So nettle root not only lowers estrogen directly, but it lowers or inhibits the activity of the aromatase enzyme that we talked about. And it also decreases the production of sex hormone binding globulin, which can again steal or bind up to 40% of the testosterone in the body. So this is gonna be one of the most beneficial herbs I think you could take for correcting this hormonal imbalance. And although nettle root is not often talked about as being a powerful skin herb, I think in this way, it is one of the most powerful longevity and anti-aging herbs overall. The second thing I'm gonna recommend is taking a look at KSM 66 ashwagandha. This is another herb that has been clinically proven to optimize testosterone levels. Not to mention, there are studies that have found that using KSM 66 ashwagandha can also increase skin health, likely through its ability to decrease the catabolistic stress hormones that attribute to skin aging while increasing the protective hormones in the body. All right, guys, that brings this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't yet already. And if you're interested in referencing any of the studies I mentioned in this video, you can find those along with links to the herbs I recommended throughout this video and links to our blog and our online wellness academy all in the description box below.